to 450 450 isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful beautiful song there will never be a sweeter story story of the Savior's love divine love that brought him from the realms of glory just to save a simple soul like mine Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Oh, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, wonderful it is to me Boundless as the universe around me Reaching to the farthest soul away Saving, keeping love it was that found me That is why my heart can truly say Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful Oh, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful it is to me Love beyond our human comprehending Love of God in Christ, how can it be? This 
will be my theme and never ending. Great redeeming love of Calvary. Is it the love of Jesus something wonderful? Brother Jeff, would you open us in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for a beautiful day that you give us here. We thank you for a good place to come to worship you, Lord. And we ask you to bless our midweek service, yes. our prayer service, our Bible study here, Lord. Bless our pastor. And bless those who are out of prayer list today, Lord. We'll ask you that soon. And we ask you to bless our uh, message you gave today. Help our hearts to be like this one. We're praying again, Lord, and keep it in our hearts. And thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do we have any visitors here tonight? Any first-time visitors here? Yeah, don't sit down. You already know the routine, right? <laughs> Amen. Okay, how about the rest of us? Just shake hands and fellowship. Okay, as you make your way back to your seats, take your songbooks, if you will, and turn to 347. 347, we'll sing, Tell It to Jesus. Such a friend or brother, 
tell it to Jesus alone. Are you troubled at the thought of dying? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. For Christ's coming kingdom are you sighing? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's for home. <coughs> Such a friend, a brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Amen. Amen. Brother Christopher, would you pray, please? evening. Y'all glad you're here? It's always good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Amongst the Lord's people. It's good to come out from the heathenville, isn't it? Anyway, our next appointed time is going to be Friday night. Reformers Unanimous at 7 o'clock right here in the auditorium. Everyone is invited and then this coming Saturday, the Shell Factory Flea Market at 8.30, they start handing out tracts. But at the same, let me see here at 9 a.m., we're going to have a softball game in Judd Park this coming Saturday. And then that's going to be food and drinks are available on a donation. And then adults need to let Mark England know if you're going to be playing. Teens let the, need, need to let Chris and Howe know if you're going to be playing. I hope everybody's got their teams already. It's getting kind of late in the game for this game, isn't it? <laughs> Somebody needs to, they need to be signed up. And then, and then April the 3rd on a Monday night at 7 p.m., the Sisters by Heart Ladies Fellowship in Portable Number 5, and they're going to re be revealing their secret sisters. So that'll be a good opportunity there. And then coming a up April the 8th, it's on a Saturday, the adult 50 and over luncheon at 12 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Chicken and dumplings. Chicken and dumplings. I'll, I said chicken and dumplings. Y'all went. Chicken and dumplings. I mean, y'all look like like preacher said a calf looking at a new gate when I said that. But anyway, and I believe there's a sign up sheet, is there not, Robert? Yes, there is. Amen. So that's going to be a great time. And then April the 23rd in the evening service, we're going to be having a business meeting. And then, yeah, next week, April the 2nd, the teens are going to have an afterglow in the fellowship hall. And that's after the evening service. And then Sunday morning, y'all need to be here at 10 o'clock. I'm glad y'all got this. That's when Sunday school starts. Y'all. Y'all need to be here for Sunday school. Amen? I think we got some of the best Sunday school teachers around. I do. I think we got some great Sunday school teachers. Amen? But y'all need to be here for that. And then our morning service at 11. The prayer meetings at 4.30 for the men's and the ladies. Choir at 5. Evening service at 6. And then a special night's Monday night with Pastor's Spiritual Warfare Bible Study at 7 p.m. 
And then Tuesday morning at 1045, they go out to the assisted living and see those folks. And you do your home visitations on Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. And that'll bring us right back here to where we're at Wednesday night, 7 o'clock midweek service. Hold on. I'll get you, Robert. And then don't forget, be praying for our family conference with Brother Keenan, the 9th through the 13th. And we just need to be praying for that. Amen? Well, it says April 9th. Sunday, Sunday, April 9th, it starts on Sunday, and then April's, yeah. I guess we're going to start it on Sunday. I, maybe they're going to start it Monday, but anyway. But anyway, he's going to be preaching, and he's a great preacher. Amen? Wow. Sunday, April 9th. Well, y'all know more about it than I do. I'll just, next time, I'll say, y'all just follow the bouncing ball up there. Amen? But anyway, just be praying for it. It doesn't really matter the dates. We're going to be here, and we need to be faithful, and we need to get some folks in here. And there's some families that need conferencing. Amen? And there's some hearts that need to be touched. So, Robert. Go out here to 41, hang a right. And I believe it's the first road pass, is it this side of Northern? Just go up here in the road just before the light, turn right, and take right down to us. Okay. That's the easiest way. You don't even need to get to 41. Just go up here and hang a right. I think it's Brown Road. Brown Road. Brown Road. Brown Road. Okay. Mary's lived up here. She knows exactly what she Brown Road. Amen. Go ahead, uh, Well, preacher, he'll get all studied up in them two weeks. Amen. Yes, sir. He'll, he'll, he'll be able to get ahead, so just scratch the, the, the Monday night. Amen. Amen. It's not a good thing, but it ain't a bad thing because there's other things taking the place. So, who's got a prayer request? Yeah. Okay. All righty, Dave. Go ahead and make your... Uh, I have a few books, study books, other books on the table in the back. There's written material back there, there's all kinds of stuff. You're welcome to whatever part of it that you'd like to have. In other words, you don't have to just sell down to one thing. You can take six of them, whatever you want to take there. Okay. Okay. All right out there on the... Okay. Karen. Uh, I got the news. My mom is out, out, of the, out of the hospital. She's doing good. Also, just pray for me. Every man, uh, she wants to come home from my mom. I said, no. She said, take it. Somebody's got to find her another place to stay. You know? <coughs> Ahead, Robert. Uh, I talked to yes. Pete Canal the other time from old time. Uh, you guys probably remember it. He came uh, here for last mm -hmm. year's conference, and uh, his father passed away shortly after that. Well, anyways, uh, his brother took over the church, and uh, just recently, another church that's uh, not too far from me was faltering, and the pastor there is leaving because uh, this is uh, seriously hurt out in California. 
Go ahead, Sarah. Amen. Amen. Oh, and also we went travel to Russia to my sister-in-law's travel with me on this evening. Okay. And we're going to get on a plane. Okay. Go ahead, Steve. Okay. Gail? Jimmy, go ahead. Jimmy. Janice. Jenny? Have you heard anything on Marvin, preacher? No, sir. No? They weren't here last week. I know he's home. Okay. We'll just keep praying for Marvin Royce and Kathy. Oh, no, I'm just talking about Diane and Marvin. Oh. Well, there's another Marvin. We'll pray for, well, we need to pray for both Marvins then. Both Marvins. Beth? For the expectant mothers list, I'd like to add Kara Bales. Okay. Who else? George? Then I'll get you, Judy. Go ahead. Her father's like to pray the Lord, give him all the glory, and just be able to come to church and be able to pray and worship to him in a country that's free still. And then uh, I'd like uh, y'all to just keep my father and my stepmom in prayer that are on a plane to Italy. Right now, so just for safe travels, and we're going to have a good time over there. And then, and a week, my mom will be flying down for safe travels for her. And so, uh, if y'all just keep her in prayer because she still struggles with the death of my brother that happened a few years ago. It's 
Okay. Judy. Yes, for Joe in the back tonight because she fell this afternoon. And um, she's, you know, just banged up her, that her knees, you know, anything the matter that she will be able to But she's here tonight. Richard. There ain't nobody that's not sitting in here that needs that doesn't need prayer. Nobody. Go ahead, Kathy. I have to pray uh, Captain Rick is putting our kitchen in today and I'm just thankful to see a kitchen in almost two months. Just pray for Rick for patience. <laughs> Amen. Where else? Jeff can relate to that. Jimmy, you got another one? Not a prayer request, but has anybody heard any more about Pastor Don Harvey? I talked to uh, Laura this morning. He is doing better right now. Um, they're hoping to get his last chemo treatment this week, but he's recording a message that for the church, and we'll play it Sunday if he if he goes up to. Yeah, yeah, but he's recording a message for us. Okay. All right. Amen. Unspoken. Go ahead, Alan. Um, for my son, Matthew, he's been sick this week. A couple of days he had to go to the hospital. He got some sort of virus and doesn't know what it is yet. He can get better so he can come back. Amen. Unspoken. And last but not least, Mary, our kids. our kids. We all have kids that need prayer. And I got to praise because Carol Hovis has been here three Sunday, three services in a row. Amen. 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 That's the praise right there. Because there for a while we didn't know what was going on. But I was in an emergency room Monday night. Really? I had to go by ambulance. I had a vein in my leg first and I was Ooh. bleeding real heavily but they glued me back together and sat down I thought I might have to ask prayer because it was an eye for her I broke up she was here there she was God is good amen 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 well if that's it then I guess it's time to come on down. Let's pray. Lord, we're so thankful for this church we have here. Lord, we have brothers and sisters here. We can pray together. We know that we can reach the throne of grace here, Lord. We ask you, special for our, our family and friends here, especially those who are close and dear to our heart. We ask for prayers, so Lord, uh, special blessings on our children, our young people, Lord. They need it. Our, our, your, your help in our prayers so bad today, Lord, um, to keep them away from this world, Lord. It's so much a more fun place to be out in the world, but Lord, we know that it's not your will. We need to be guiding, good guides for our children, our families. Help us with um, our, our sick here in the church, Lord. In, in the bus accident that happened today in Texas, Lord, there's a, a, a church bus that was in a, involved in a head-on collision. Uh, bless the people that died, uh, their families, Lord, um, and those who are hurt in this uh, bad accident, Lord, bless them. And, uh, heal their bodies. Help them to come back to your churches, Lord. Uh, please bless Karen's family. 
And um, in New York, uh, there's a Grace Baptist. I'm sure you're more aware of it than any of us. Lord, they need your help. And when you've got a big church building and a small number of people to keep it going, it's, it's impossible without your help, Lord. Please bless that situation. Um, we have many praise reports in our church, Lord, uh, for Curtis is having a rough time. Please bless him, Lord. And, uh, this man or woman that's in hospice, Lord, uh, at, at uh, the end of one's life is the only reason we use hospice, Lord, to my mom's uh, under the same care. And they're good folks that help dying people, Lord. I ask you to bless uh, Bonnie's brother and uh, prayer uh, for Washington, Lord, for our president. He, he has more of an attack from Satan and the evil men and women in this country, Lord, that want to take him down so badly. And we know he's not a perfect man, Lord, but we know he, he can do the job that you give him, Lord. Please bless him and help him to do your will. We pray for Scotty's dad's heart, Lord. Bless Scotty's family. Help them that they can eat better and have better um, a diet, Lord, that they could have a healthy life, Lord. Most of all, make uh, the family, that there be salvation in the family too, Lord. And Janice's son for a skin cancer. And uh, Brother Spake's health, Lord. Um, I see him from time to time walking, and he needs his health for walking, Lord, and being able to attend your church. Uh, we pray for Marvin. George's family for safe travel, and uh, Joe who fell today, uh, bless her Lord, um, and, and uh, heal our bodies Lord, help us to keep our balance good Lord, all of us are starting to get older as we go Lord, uh, the person with kidney stones Lord, I know they're, they're a horrible thing and uh, it's just part of life unfortunately for some of us. I ask you to bless this person with the kidney stones, Lord, and especially all the people in this church, Lord, that might have kidney stones or are going to have them. It seems almost like half the people I know have them, Lord. Please bless us with our stones. Help us to keep them from growing and teach us a better diet that we can uh, help them to dissolve in our body. And be especially close to Don Hardman today. His cancer, Lord, is... Um, it's a big battle that he's facing, Lord. Please bless him and bless the medical uh, help that he's getting, Lord, that it would do a perfect work in his body, that he could come back to preach to us, Lord. And bless him as he does his recording for us here. For my wife's sister and her brother-in-law as they travel in the morning back to uh, Michigan, bless their trip, Lord. Bless Alan's son's the virus that would pass through his body quickly, Lord. He could get back to church. And uh, again, pray for all our children, our police force, and our fire department that's under attack from Satan also, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Y'all take your Bibles and turn to the book of James. James chapter 5. How many of y'all been having kind of a rough week this week? How many of y'all been having a good week this week? We got more good than bad, so there you go. I haven't decided about mine yet. Well, this is Wendy, uh, Wednesday, Wendy, Wednesday. You know how mine's gone then. All right, James chapter 5, and look at verse 16. It says, confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you tonight for Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the ones that have gathered out to hear the preaching of the Word of God. 
And Lord, I pray right now that anointing from on high might fall down upon this message, upon your messenger. And Lord, just meet with us here tonight. Lord, give us some little nuggets of gold here tonight that we might be able to take and apply. And Lord, I just pray that you would, Father, just bless the preaching of the word tonight. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to preach, if you want to put a title to it, on how to get your prayers answered. You know, that's a key thing. Uh, how many of y'all have a, a designated time that you pray, or you just pray? Well, the Bible says that praying always. So uh, a lot of people, you know, they go into their prayer closet. Y'all pray for me that I can talk tonight. Uh, <clears throat> in the morning, some at night, some... It just depends, <coughs> excuse me, but if the Bible tells us there in James 5, 16, it says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. And I, a lot of, I mean, I know part of that is dealing with physical healing, but it's also dealing with a spiritual healing. If you've got a problem with another brother or sister in the Lord, that's a fault. It says, confess your faults one with another. And then it says, and pray one for another. If you can pray one for another, you're not going to have any faults one with another. And, the, and if we do that, the Bible says, that ye may be healed. Any problem you got. Then it says, the effectual... Fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The word effectual, according to Webster's 1828, says producing an effect. When you pray, you ought to pray believing that it is going to produce an effect. And it says, are the effect desired or intended? Then it goes on, it says, or having adequate power or force to produce the effect. I want to let you know there is power in prayer. And we need to start tapping into that power. And that power is from on high. And the Bible tells us that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That word availeth, it means to profit, advantage towards success, and to benefit. So if our prayer is effectual, it's going to cause an effect to happen, and it's going to be for our profit, it's going to be for the advantage of the propagation of the gospel, of the church, or whatever. There in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 7, it says, According to the gift of the grace of God given me by the effectual working of His power. That power is given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ, and it is effectual in our lives. Now remember what effectual means? Producing an effect. I don't know about you, but when I got saved, I wasn't... I still, I, every time I think about that, I said, man, you know, I was really, I was dumber than a rock. I remember when I first went to a Bible study, Brother Jerry had, and I didn't even take my Bible to a Bible study. I, I mean, didn't have a Bible to take, but he gave me one of his, and I didn't know where the books of the Bible were. I mean, I went to Sunday school growing up, but I never learned the books of the Bible. And he started calling the page number out for me in an old Schofield Bible that he had loaned me. But then I started growing in the Lord. And the more you partake of this book, the stronger you will be. The more you read it, the more and it'll increase your faith. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now, there are some people who wonder why their prayers are not answered. I want to study tonight on what the conditions are which God has prescribed in His Word to be met. And when we meet those conditions, things will happen. But you've got to understand, when you meet those conditions, it's, 
it needs to be cheerfully, not grudgingly, Amen. cheerfully. Number one, first of all, we need to seek God with all the heart. Over in Jeremiah, turn over to Jeremiah with me. I want you to see that verse. That's in the Old Testament if you have a hard time finding it. Jeremiah chapter 29. That's on page 803. 803. And look at verse 10. For thus saith the Lord that after 70 years were accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Now look at verse 12. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whether I have driven you, saith the Lord, and I will bring you again unto the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. What is the condition there? Seeking God with our whole heart. See, the Bible, God told him, he said, look, and ye shall seek me and find me when, there in verse 13, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. You know, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You can come to church every time the doors are open. You can do everything that's expected of a child of God to do. But if your heart is not in tune with the heart of God, you're not really doing anything. We need to seek God with our whole heart. A lot of people have God up here, but they don't have God here. And you've got to understand that you've got to have Christ in you. That's here the hope of glory before you start seeking God with your whole heart. Amen. There's no way you can do it other than that. Not only after you start seeking God with all the heart, this is the hard thing. You've got to wait on the Lord. Amen. Lord, I want it now. You know, Psalms 40 verse 1, he says, I waited patiently for the Lord. Now, I preached this a couple of Sundays ago. Where was, where was the psalmist talking about here. It was an individual that was in that horrible pit. He was sinking down for the third time, so to speak. He was without hope, without help, and without God. And he cried unto the Lord, and he said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me. That word inclined, it means that he came to him where he was. Where was he? He was waiting patiently for the Lord. You got to understand that when God works, it's in His timing, not ours. God deals in eternity anyhow, and it don't make no difference to Him how long something takes. But with us, we get a little antsy, don't we? Hurry up, Lord, I need something from you. Hurry up, Lord, you need to answer this. God says, hey, I ain't going to do it. You need to learn to wait upon the Lord. Amen. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I know we got a few impatient people, don't we? The Bible says over in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. 
They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. They that wait upon the Lord. And I don't know about you, but that's hard to do, isn't it? I mean, we live in a Burger King society. We want it our way, and we want it right now. You know, well, I, don't know I can't remember which one that was come out a few years ago that if it took you more than 30 minutes to get through the, uh, get ordered or something in the drive through that they'll give your meal free or something. Or was it Domino's? I, it was some, I knew it was something like that. But you start thinking about that. You know, why is that? People are impatient. How many of you ever uh, been driving down the road and some slow belly gets in front of you? And you're in a hurry, and they just putz along. Some little granny or something, you know, bless her heart. <laughs> oh, Lord. Every time, every time I uh, drive anymore, it seems like I'm, I'm having to pray the whole time. It ain't for protection. It's, Lord, forgive me for this. Lord, help me. I'm feeling the love here tonight. <laughs> Seek the Lord with all your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. And ask in faith. The Bible says over Matthew 21, 22, All things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Now, the one time and all time condition for receiving answers to our prayers is faith. When you pray, believe. You know, I've told that story before, and I like it. This little old lady up in North Carolina, they was having a drought up there, and they were going to have a prayer meeting for God and asking God for, to send rain. So she come walking in the church with an umbrella, and everybody says, Granny, what you got the umbrella for? She said, well, we come here to pray for rain. I, I expect it to rain. That's what you got to understand when you pray, pray believing. That's faith. And then you need to ask according to God's will. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, it says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. You know, if we want what God has for us, we can have what we want. Let me say that again. If we want what God has for us, and you think God's got something good for us? If we want what God has for us, we can have what we want. So when you ask in, in fair, uh, faith, asking and believing God, God's going to give it to you. Praise the Lord. It might not be what you in your what you in your mind think you need, but God will supply all your need. That's need singular, according to His riches and glory. God's not going to bog you down with a bunch of junk that it ain't going to, you won't really appreciate. When you get an answer to prayer, you know how, you remember, how many of you ever had an answer to prayer? Remember how exciting that was when that happened? I mean, it's unbelievable. And another condition for getting your prayers answered is setting our love on God. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Over in Psalms chapter 91, turn over there, I want you to see this. Psalms 91, you need to mark this in your Bible too. A lot of people say, well, you shouldn't mark your Bible. Well, I think the devil told you to say that. I don't know about you, but I can't remember something if I don't write something down. Psalms chapter 91, and 
Well, the whole chapter is good, but let's just save a little bit of time. Let's look at verse 14. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. Glory, hallelujah, man. I don't know if you want what that means. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. See, when we set our love on God, when we love him the way he loves us, and that was a condition there in verse 14 now, because he hath set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. You having a hard time? Set your love on Him. Praise Him. Serve Him. And He will take care of you. It says He will deliver you. Out of what? Out of any trouble or problem that you're having, He will. That's a promise from God, church. You know, this is a great and a gracious promise promise from God. If we'll set our love upon Him, He will deliver us. Another thing that's getting your prayers answered is found over in John chapter 15. Turn over there. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Look at verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. But without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide in me, not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. And look at verse 7. This is what I wanted to show you. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. That's a promise from God, church. That word abide, it means to stay, and it means to dwell. When we abide in Christ, every essence of your life ought to be centered upon Him. Amen. I know I have people say, you know, you people are, you know, going to church all the time, you're just a religious fanatic. Well, the word fanatic means fan. I'm a fan of Jesus, I don't know about you. Amen. There's people that goes to every NASCAR race, every football game, every baseball game, every basketball game, or watch it or whatever. That's all right. But when you start coming to church and you go more than twice a week, man, you're a fanatic. Praise the Lord. I'm glad it shows. But when you, you know, abiding in Christ means to dwell in Him. He is my life. And if you're saved, he's your life. This means that we have a holy heart. It means that we are firm and faithful in the Christian life. I don't know about you, but I'm not changing. The world has got nothing that I want. Nothing. Everything that I need, my sufficiency... And your sufficiency is in Christ. 
That ought to be all, everybody ought to be content. But guess what? Some of us aren't. That's that all human flesh, that nature. Another thing, a condition on getting your prayers answered is keeping God's commandments. It is obeying them from the standpoint of want to instead of a have to. If you love me, keep my commandments. In other words, if you love me, you will keep his commandments. And I, that's not just the Ten Commandments. Everybody with any common sense knows thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. That's just something that your conscience tells you that. But there's some other things. And one of, the love of, one of the laws of the love of Christ is that we love one another. If you have love one for another, the world can see that and they know that we're the disciples of Christ. Keeping God's commandments is essential to having our prayers answered. Now, seeking God with all the heart Waiting on the Lord patiently, asking in faith, nothing wavering, asking according to God's will, not to bring riches or fame or whatever to you, but according to God's will, setting our love on God, abiding in Christ, and seeking God's commandments or keeping God's commandments. You've got to understand that there's some prerequisites for God to answer our prayers, and that's what it is. If you'll follow that little outline, that little, if just apply it, when you're praying, when you're seeking God, and having fellowship with God, do it God's way, and I guarantee you, God will hear, and God will answer. There's nothing any better knowing that you're in tune with the Spirit of God. Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Every one of us ought to be praying, God, fill me up. God, help me, Lord, to be pleasing to you. Lord, give me that faith that I need. Help me, love to, uh, Lord, to love you with my whole heart. Help me, Lord, just to, to wait on you, knowing that you're going to answer knowing that you've got the answer already, you already know what the end is before the beginning. And look, Lord, I want to abide in you. I want to be so close and so knit with you that sometimes people look at me, they can't see nothing but you. That's what we need. You know, people start getting that attitude. You know what will happen in this church? We'll have Holy Ghost revival. That's what it's all about. You get God starting to answer your prayers and you start praying the way God wants you to pray, honey, you'll start getting a little excited about the things of God because God will answer your prayers and you'll see God moving in people's lives in the church and glory, hallelujah, man, things will go, man, when things start happening and the Holy Ghost of God starts coming down in this place, glory, hallelujah, man, it'll get on. And I'll tell you what, you'll get excited, this preacher will get excited and glory, how you'll start seeing people coming here and getting born into the family of God. You'll see the one sitting here that's all cold and dried up, getting a little excited about God, getting a fire going down deep in their soul. We start praying God's way, honey, and I guarantee you it'll happen. It'll happen. Glory, hallelujah. Do you want God's blessing? Do you want God's blessing on your life in this church? Well, you start praying, believing. You start praying in faith. You put your love on God. God said, if you love me with your whole heart, he said, I will hear your prayer and I will answer and I'll deliver you out of your problem. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Did I do that? Yes, Praise the Lord. of you want to get your prayers answered. I love it, man. 
You know, we're, uh, we've been praying. Uh, Rachel's getting ready to go up to the RU program in Rockford, Illinois. And uh, that's amazing how God has opened just praying, believing. And, I, you know, I, I don't understand how it works sometimes, you know, how God works. And it's amazing to me that, you know, when I, you start seeing God work in a situation, you know. And uh, I talked to uh, Angela up there. They, they've got it's some, well, let me show you one of the things that happened was praying that we've been supporting RU for about a year now, $100 a month for the home. So they had a started a special thing when George and I went up there to the convention last year. They had a, a thing to where if we'll support the home, that if we have anybody in our chapter here that needs to go up there, and I had no idea it'd be Rachel, we get it for half price. I mean, the whole price up top was what seventy five hundred or some something like that. But half price that's thirty five hundred or something like that, thirty four or thirty something. So anyhow, I don't know where that's coming from, but my God does. So I'm just trusting God. But I had to give her a five hundred dollar non refundable deposit today. And as I was talking to her on the phone, I, the Lord says, "Well." Who's in charge of this thing, me or you? And I says, you, Lord. She said, he said, I, the whole time I was thinking, I said, man, $500, that's a lot of money. If something happens and she can't go, I said, I don't get that back. Go ahead and take it. I give her my credit card number. I said, go ahead and take it out of there. I'll pay for it one way or another. I'll go sell blood every month. But see, God is in charge. Yes. And see, I figured if everybody here would give a pint of blood uh, every... <laughs> I don't even know how much you get for that junk. I don't know. I ain't never done that before. But yeah. I can't even give blood when you give it away free, man. I'll tell you what. Anyhow, but, you know, but see, that's the way God works. And then when George was talking to his cousin up there, he says, well, uh, they only have 10 beds for that deal that we were in. And that said that all the beds, they have 10 beds that was, has that deal, and all beds were full. So started praying. And before we got finished, you know, in the next day or so, there was one lady left the home. They didn't exactly know what bed it was, but it was one of those 10 beds. So then Rachel's names, they're, they're reserving that bed for her. So it's going to happen. But, but then we got to, I want, want y'all to be praying earnestly because we won't know anything. The state here has to give her approval because she's on probation to transfer from here up to there. They've already received her up there, though. That was a big thing for them to, down here to let, it, let her do it. So, but we won't know anything till next Wednesday. Hopefully we'll know then. So anyhow, be praying that God will just touch the hearts of everybody down there. And plus, we took them the judicial packet down there for the RU ministry. And I, we, I've been praying ever since we started this somehow to get into the judicial system to where they start having these guys and girls that goes to the court, the drug court, have them make them come here on Friday nights. Uh, this is one of the greatest ministries around, for, especially for these, uh, these people out there. On, I mean, they're, they're hurting. And this is a start, and God's working. So y'all just keep praying. C pray believing. Use this on how to get your prayers answered, and I guarantee you God will start doing Glory something God. here. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. We'll have a word of invitation. You mind the Lord here tonight. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking you tonight for the Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you for everyone that's here tonight. And Lord, I just thank you, God, for your many, many blessings. Lord, you, you bless us, God. Uh, a lot of times we don't even realize. But God, I just pray now that you would have your hand upon this invitation tonight. God, I pray that you touch the hearts of your people. Help this church to be known as a praying church and a church that prays in and through faith. And Lord, I just want to thank you tonight for Jesus. 
I pray this now in His precious name. Amen. If the Lord's spoken to you here tonight, or you just need to come down and pray, whatever, you mind the Lord. 394. All to Jesus I surrender. Anybody got a word of testimony for the Lord? Brother Pennington, go ahead and say something. You're standing. No, that's Steve. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, he's been coming for some time. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Man. Hey, now, Steve, why don't you stand with Steve up here? I'll have a church come by and shake his hand. How about that? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's all stand. We'll be dismissed in prayer. Man, that's a good thing to see somebody getting saved, man. I'll tell you what. So, uh, praise the Lord. Brother George, why don't you close us in prayer tonight, brother? Oh, gracious.
you'll come down in a mighty way. Just meet with us, Lord. And Lord, if there's somebody there that comes there that night, that they, if they don't know you, that they'll come to know you. Lord, I just thank you for this, this service. Lord, help us to pray, Lord. Lord, help us to know how to pray in the Spirit and just come to you boldly and before your throne, Lord. Just give us that confidence, knowing that you are our God and you are the, the Lord and our Savior of this world. And that we can come before you and if we ask, you will give it to us. And I just thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, I just, I just pray as we go out tonight that you'll just give us safe travels and just, uh, Lord, meet with us in, in a way that, uh, that only you can. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, you did meet with Mark out front that's going to play ball. God bless you, Steve.